All right. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Constable Pat Bigelow with the Fort Saskatchewan RCMP. Uh, today is March 30th, 2021. Uh, just before we get started today, I'd just like to thank uh, a couple of employees of the city of Fort Saskatchewan, uh, specifically Kaylee Anderson and Karen Gill for helping me organize this and uh, get this all out to you. So we'll get started here. All right, so uh, today we're going to be talking about online child safety uh, as it relates to uh, sexual offenses. So we're going to be talking about several different things, including uh, the different criminal code uh, offenses, their definitions and punishments, some statistics, some case studies. Uh, there's going to be information directed towards students, youths, on how to keep themselves safe online um, and how to identify when they may be being targeted. Uh, there's going to be information for parents on what to keep an eye out for, uh, such as, you know, their change of behaviors, uh, apps on their phone is going to be another one. Uh, and then at the end of the presentation, I'll leave a list of resources. So, uh, yeah, you know, the Internet can be a wonderful research tool. Uh, so feel free as well to do some digging of your own. Uh, there is a lot of information out there. Um, the issue with this presentation I had was not finding information. It was uh, narrowing it down to um, to make it, you know, a, sh a short enough presentation that we could keep your attention. So uh, last month we sent on a media release asking for any questions that you had about this topic. Uh, so for the ones that responded, thank you. Uh, hopefully I'm able to answer them. But um, again, if not, uh, between the resources there at the end that I leave and your own research, uh, hopefully you can find an answer to those questions. Uh, and then in doubt, you can always contact your local police agency. Sorry, one sec. All right, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so uh, like I was just saying, uh, if you have any questions about uh, anything further, if they're not answered, um, yeah, between that, you can do your own research and contact your local police agency. So um, in my experience, uh, a lot of times people have questions about um, online safety, like when it comes to scams and frauds and computer hacking, uh, that's a topic in itself that uh, would, would be a large topic to cover. So today we're not gonna do that, um, but you know, maybe one day. So for this presentation, I've gathered several uh, different materials from several different sources, including the Center for Youth Crime Prevention. And then I've also added my own ideas and thoughts into this. So uh, I think you're gonna be watching this on YouTube. Uh, normally this is a presentation, of course, that we'd like to do in person, but uh, due to COVID-19, um we've been limited on how we can share this information so this is the best we've come up with uh, and i guess the nice thing about this is that if you know if i'm going too fast or i guess too slow and you want to review something you can do that at your convenience so while we talk about all this uh remember that if you are a victim you're not in any trouble there's lots of resources out there um and when you're ready please contact your local police so uh, have you ever heard of stranger danger? It's the idea that uh, you're not supposed to talk with the creepy strangers in public. Well, it also uh, applies to strangers online. Uh, we use our electronic devices for almost everything. Uh, they play a big role in our lives. It's important for us to understand how social media and the internet uh, can be used in a positive way uh, in order to have a safe and fun experience. Um, so it's important to understand that everything we post online can be seen by anyone and really it, it can be permanent. Uh, we have no idea what happens uh, once it gets sent. And so remember that what happens online can have offline consequences. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna briefly go through some um, some of the offenses under the criminal code. As police officers, we use a criminal code of Canada uh, when laying charges. Um, Within the criminal code, there's what they call annotations, which are further explanations um, based on previous court rulings. So uh, we don't have time to, to go into these too deep, but what I've done is I, you'll see is I've summarized some of the main ones. Um, so for further wordings, uh, further definitions, you can uh, just Google criminal code of Canada. You'll see a link like this here uh, comes up and then you can go from there. So first one, uh, let's see how this works. Uh, luring a child. So section 172.1 of the Criminal Code of Canada, it'll say that every person commits an offense who, for a sexual purpose, by means of telecommunication, communicates with, 
So uh, under that, there's subsection A, B, and C. So subsection A is uh, for a person who is, or the accused believe is under the age of 18. Subsection B is age 16. Subsection C is uh, age 14. So uh, the punishment for that uh, could, be, uh, could be a punishment of uh, sentencing, sorry, of up to 14 years in jail. So there's some online predators will create a fake online uh, identity to try to create a relationship with the child. After a while, once they get the child to feel uh, comfortable and then they can trust them, that they may ask them for nude or partially nude photos or videos. Um, the online predator will then use this photo or video to blackmail or extort, extort the youth later. They may say something like, uh, if you don't send me more photos, I will send the ones I have to all your friends, family, teachers. Uh, so youth may be vulnerable to being lured or victimized online because the online predator appeal, uh, appears very friendly. They may lie about their age or location or appearance, uh, hobbies in order to relate to the youth. Um, they may compliment or flatter the youth, um, which makes them feel like they're in a real friendship or a romantic relationship. Also, some online predators may even convince the youth to meet them in person. Uh, this is very dangerous. And we'll actually talk about this in one of the case studies later. Uh, so moving along here, uh, making sexually explicit uh, material available to a child is section 171.1 of the criminal code, which states every person who uh, every person commits an offense who transmits, makes available, distributes or sells sexually explicit material to uh, this is the same thing. So subsection A is for a person under the age of 18. Subsection B is a person uh, under the age of 16. And subsection C is under the age of 14. Uh, same thing, punishment could be sentenced up to 14 years in jail. Next one, invitation to sexual touching is, uh, oh, well, went ahead there. So that's okay. Uh, so invitation to sexual touching is uh, section 152. So every person who uh, for sexual purpose invites, counsels, or incites a person under the age of 16 years to touch with their body or an object or the body of any person, that could be sentenced up to 14 years in jail. Moving right along, uh, child pornography is section 163.1. Uh, so it's defined as, um, a photographic film, video, or other visual representation uh, that shows a person who is or is depicted as being under the age of 18 years and is engaged in or depicted as engaged in sexual activity uh, or uh, the dominant char characteristic of which is the depiction for a sexual purpose of a sexual organ or the anal region of a person under the age of 18 years. Uh, can also be a, any written uh, material, visual representation, or audio recording that advocates or counsels sexual activity with a person under the age of 18, um, and any written material whose dominant characteristic is the description for a sexual purpose of sexual activity with a person under the age of 18 years. Uh, the next, the last one is, uh, yeah. Uh, instead of written material, it can be an audio recording of that as well. Uh, so a picture or video of a youth under the age of 18 years old who is naked or semi-naked or, or engaging in a sex act is considered child pornography. So in addition to being illegal, sexting uh, intimate images or videos is very risky. Uh, once you post that video uh, or share it by text, it's almost impossible to control what happens to it. And they can be saved on computers or stored online forever. You can take a screenshot and distribute it without your knowledge. Uh, extortion. So anyone who, without reasonable excuse, uses threats, accusations, or violence to do anything. Now, the victim does not have to feel threatened, uh, nor does there have to actually be any violence. The punishment for that uh, is depending on how it was committed. So if there was the use of a weapon or compared to maybe their first offense, it could be all the way from uh, four years all the way up to life imprisonment. So uh, indecent acts or exposing. So uh, it has to, for this one, it has to be in a public space. Uh, so sending nude images over text would not constitute a charge of indecent exposure. However, this is still good information to know. So indecent acts is section 173.1, uh, which states that of the criminal code, which states that everyone who willfully does an indecent act in a public place in the presence of one or more persons or in any place with the intent to insult or offend any person uh, the punishment for this that could be sentenced up to two years. 
So indecent exposure is 173.2. Uh, so every person who in any place for a sexual purpose exposes his or her genital, genital organs to a person who is under the age of 16. Uh, this one could be a punishment of anywhere from 90 days to two years. Uh, and agree. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Uh, agreement or arrangement uh, of sexual offenses against the child. So anyone who, by means of telecommunication, makes an arrangement with a person to commit an offense uh, who is or the accused believes is under the age of 18. Uh, the subsection B is under 16 and C is under 14. Uh, this one could be sentenced to from uh, six months up to 14 years in jail. Uh, Last one here is non-consensual distribution of intimate images. Uh, so everyone who knowingly publishes, distributes, transmits, or sells, makes available, or advertises an intimate image of a person knowing that the person depicted in the image did not give their consent to that conduct. Uh, so in this section, an intimate image means a visual recording of a person made by any means, including a photographic or visual recording. Um, so it talks about... Uh, in which the person is exposing their genitals or female breasts or is engaged in explicit sexual activity and also at the time of the recording there was a reasonable expectation of privacy so that was a lot um yeah if you're like me it's, it's easier to learn things when i read it rather than hear someone talk about it so uh go check that out for for those uh, definitions Okay, so uh, what is sexting? Uh, it's the exchange of these images or videos um, through sending sexual messages through social media, text or email. So an intimate image is a photo uh, or video that shows a person who is a naked or semi-naked or engaged in sexual activity. Uh, so we're gonna watch a video here, it should work. Being a teenager is an adventure. There are many challenges along the way. Like sex sourcing. What's sex extortion? It's when someone who you just met online tricks you into sending naked pictures or videos of yourself and threatens to send them to your friends and family unless you pay or send more news. It's like extortion, but with sex at the beginning. Sextortion. Major bomber. It's normal to want to explore your sexuality. You meet a nice young lady online. Things are getting a little... Well, and she asks you to send a nude. Well, you could send one of yourself. What's going on in there? Or you could send a naked mole rat. Long, veiny, and fleshy, the naked mole rat, <laughs> you can call him Willie, looks a lot like that picture you were just about to send. Except it's got two beady little eyes and four sharp little teeth at the tip. Oh, and it won't lead to sextortion. So, the next time someone you've just met online asks you for a nude, don't get sextorted. Send a naked mole rat instead. There you go. So, send a naked mole rat instead of a. All right, so uh, there's a couple of case studies here that we're gonna talk about. Uh, so uh, moving from left to right. So in 2016, there were four 15 year olds and two 18 year olds from Nova Scotia that were accused of keeping intimate images on a Dropbox account. Uh, they were charged with distributing, sorry, distributing intimate images without consent. Uh, the teens are also charged with possessing and distributing child porn. Uh, the intimate images law was created by the conservative government after the death of youth uh, Rita Parsons was part of a wider effort aimed at reducing the flow of explicit photos being shared on the internet without consent. Uh, so in 2012, Amanda Todd took her own life at the age of 15. She was cyberbullied and extorted by a stranger online. Uh, Amanda created a YouTube video detailing her story with handwritten signs explaining how she was lured by a stranger to expose her breasts over webcam. Uh, just recently, actually in December 2020, uh, Aidan Coban was extradited from the Netherlands to face Canadian charges uh, for this case, including charges of extortion, possession of child porn, and communicating with a young person to commit a sexual offense. 
Uh, 15-year-old Carly Ryan from Australia. Uh, in 2006, she thought she'd met the boy of her dreams, who was claiming to be an 18-year-old. Uh, turns out he was a 50-year-old by the name of Gary Francis. Um, she didn't know at the time, but so in 2007, Gary convinced Carly to meet up in a um, secluded beach in southern Australia. Uh, once at the beach, he killed her by assaulting her and drowning her. Uh, when, uh, when police located Gary, he was logged into his computer, taking uh, talk, sorry, talking to another young girl. Uh, Gary was arrested, charged, and sentenced to life behind bars with no parole for 29 years. So we're going to just briefly talk about consent. Um, when a child is lured online, there is no consent, but this is a, a good topic to quickly cover anyway, uh, as it's all part of healthy relationships. So in 2001, the Supreme Court of Canada decided that young people have a right to express themselves sexually by creating and sharing sexual images of themselves if, so the image is sent voluntarily between consenting individuals who are close in age, the image doesn't depict abuse or assault, and the image stays private, uh, being not posted or shared. Uh, so a few things here. So when talking about consent, you need to ask yourself if the other person is capable of giving consent. Uh, you know, are they on drugs or too drunk? Are they asleep, uh, underage, uh, unconscious? They cannot give consent. Uh, you can confirm if you have consent by checking the other person's body language and asking them, you know, ask them if they're okay. A look at their body language and facial expressions to see if they're eager and comfortable. Uh, if they see them, I'm unhappy. Uh, and you're not sure if they're consenting, then stop. Uh, clear, affirmative, freely given yes indicates consent. Uh, check with them on each occasion you start any sexual activity and each time you start a new type of sexual activity. Even if they've already consented, they have a right to change their mind at any time. Uh, it must be definite. Uh, so maybe or I think so doesn't mean that consent is given. It must be voluntary with no pressure, threats, intimidation or bargaining. So age of consent, um, yeah, there's, I think this graph all went all the way through. So uh, yeah, just take a look there, at, you know, the age is 12 to 13 um, and so on here, which I'll explain a little bit. So consent to sexual activity, the age of consent is the age at which a young person can legally agree to sexual activity. Age of consent laws apply to all forms of sexual activity, ranging from kissing and fondling to sexual intercourse. All sexual activity without consent is a criminal offense without uh, sorry, regardless of age. Uh, there are serious offenses that carry serious penalties, uh, including mandatory minimums. So Canada's age of consent uh, for sexual activity is 16 years, uh, in 16 years old. In some cases, uh, the age of consent is higher, for example, when the relationship is one of trust or authority or dependency. So in other words, a person uh, must be at least 16 years old to be able to legally agree to sexual activity. Now, there are close in age exception, exceptions, uh, which is what it talks more about here. Uh, so a 14 year old or 15 year old can consent to sexual activity as long as the partner is less than five years older and there is no real relationship of trust, authority or dependency or any other exploitation of the young child. This means that if the partner is five years or older than the 14 or 15 year old, any sexual activity is a criminal offense. There's also a close in age exception for 12 and 13 year olds. So a 12 or 13 year old can consent to sexual activity with a partner as long as the partner is less than two years older and there is no relationship of trust, authority or dependency other than, or sorry, or any other exploitation of the young person. This means that if the partner is two years or older than the 12, 12 or 13 year old, any sexual activity is a criminal offense. Uh, sexual exploitation is, um, so a 16 or 17 year old cannot consent to sexual activity if um, their sexual partner is in a position of trust or authority towards them, for example, their teacher or coach. Uh, the young person is dependent on their sexual partner, for example, care or support. Uh, the relationship between the young person and their sexual partner is exploitative, uh, meaning the age of the young person, uh, how was their relationship developed, etc. 
Uh, so just quickly here, this is from the Canadian Centre for Child Protection. It's just in regards to COVID and the increasing rate of online exploitation. So since COVID-19 has started, cybertip.ca has seen an increase of 88% in reports relating to child uh, children receiving sexual messages or videos or images from online from adults online, um, being coerced into sending sexual images or videos or engaging in sexual activity and having sexual images or videos of themselves shared online. So there's a few things that are good for both uh, youth and parents in regards to what things to look for. Um, so grooming examples, um, you know, friend requests. Do you, if you get a friend request, do you have any mutual friends with this person? What does their profile tell you about them? Do they have any photos, any, any friends? Uh, ASL, uh, age, sex, location, I might ask. Uh, they may tailor their language to try to use a similar language as the child, like such as spelling mistakes or abbreviations. Uh, they may identify with the child's problems. So you know, talk, say how oh, they're having a tough time in school or with their homework or friends. Um, they may, uh, to gauge the interest of the youth, they'll talk about non-child porn photos. So they'll start slow. They may request a video chat uh, to claim that they, you know, they want to get to know them better. Uh, so there may not be any sexual requests on the first few chats. Uh, very importantly, almost every time, uh, regardless of anything online, any frauds, anything, including, is the big thing is secrecy. Is they're going to tell you, the youth, to keep this all a secret, uh, including from their best friends and family. So, uh, yeah, here's some common lures. Uh, you can just take a quick look at those, read through those. Same with physical signs, uh, what you as a parent can look for uh, in your child, that, that might be a sign that, uh, you know, they're being exploited online. You know, like change in their behavior, maybe before they were social and outgoing, and now they're not. Uh, for parents, uh, it's very important to talk to your children. Uh, you need to have those difficult conversations with them about sending nude photos online and sexting and so on. Uh, it'll be awkward. Uh, they may not want to engage in the conversation, but by having those conversations, you're uh, opening the door for them to talk, uh, creating that safe, play, safe space and um, you know, staying in the loop of what your children are up to. Uh, it's also very important to set boundaries uh, with your children with respect to their online presence. You know, most parents nowadays, we didn't have cell phones at the age of 12, um, let alone a presence on social media. So you need to strike that balance between uh, giving freedoms and responsibilities to your children, but uh, you also don't want to be overprotective. Um, important as well, that's uh, remind them that if they get caught in something like, you know, sending nude photographs to a stranger, they're not in any trouble. Um, it's your job as the parent to provide your children with the information and support for their well-being. So what you can do, uh, this is by no means a complete list, however, just a few things uh, what you can do, like for instance, youth. First of all, don't just, just don't. Uh, don't send nude photos to anyone, including your partners. Just save a lot of headaches. Uh, be aware of those warning signs. Uh, clean up your social media presence. Be aware of what you're posting. Uh, you can restrict who sees your page like make it not so it's public uh if if somebody shady is messaging you just block them block the account uh, don't keep it a secret again if, if somebody messages you make it shady tell somebody about it uh tell a parent teacher an adult you trust police counselor uh, parents again you know establish those clear expectations and rules uh very important do not think this will never happen to my kid uh yeah, that's very important. Uh, get involved to get online with your child, you know, create a Facebook page, whatever yourself. So you kind of keep an eye on what's going on. Uh, be supportive and non-judgmental. Let them know that you're here to help and that you care. Um, if something happens again, tell them that you're sorry it happened and acknowledge that it's difficult. Uh, be patient with moody behavior. Uh, and important, be an advocate for your child. Uh, so uh, for the parents, these are explanations of what appears to be normal emojis. However, they can have underlying sexual meaning. Uh, take a look at these and yeah, learn a little bit.
Okay, you can pause that if you need more time. Uh, so there's some more emojis, uh, which can signify something other than what they appear to be. And if you need more time, I'll just pause that. All right, so uh, some of the questions we received online from the media release had to do with uh, online activity. So uh, when you sign up for an app, uh, there should be fine print there, which lays out you know, what they're going to do with the information that you provide. Uh, but important that you know, when you sign up for an online account, yeah, Fortnite or Call of Duty, whatever, you don't have to give your real information. Um, that's gonna just help prevent that your real name, whatever, being shared with the wrong people. Um, now, obviously, you know, CRA, whatever, that kind of stuff, that's different, but for stuff that really, you don't need to put your real information in there. Uh, so most apps are free to download. You just need iTunes or Google Pay, Play. Um, they're easy to connect with random individuals. Um, you might only have a username. There may be group chats. Uh, you may be able to receive messages from individuals who are not on your friends list. So gaming apps uh, provide a method to randomly connect with individuals. Um, it's, yeah, there, there may be a chat component or over like a mic um, with people that they don't know in person. Uh, from there, children can be exposed to inappropriate conversations or even redirected to inappropriate content on other sites. Um, also some gaming apps utilize a GPS during gameplay, which uh, may, uh, allow the location of the user to be ident identified by other users. Uh, history of communication through applications may not be saved. Uh, some some chat apps uh, log the conversations but allow them to be easily, delete, easily deleted with the swipe of a finger. Others may log conversations by default or offer, offering settings to save them. Uh, and some, uh, some may not record any of the conversation at all. Okay, so here's some apps to know. Uh, here's some apps that yeah, your children may be maybe new uh, using. Uh, I'm sure most of these you, you've heard of, um, but problem is, is there's so many apps out there, new ones coming out all the time. It's difficult to stay on top of them. But uh, and most of these have honest uses, uh, but they they can be used for a way to reach out to your child. So uh, like this first one, secret calculator, it looks like a calculator, but really it functions as a secret photo vault. So you can share, um, excuse me, uh, or sorry, you can, you can store things like photos or videos or websites in there. Uh, Yubu uh, is formerly called Yellow. Uh, it's an app that's often called Tinder for teens. Uh, because I guess there's the option to swipe left or right on the profiles to accept the other user. And then if two people swipe right on each other, they can communicate over Snapchat or Instagram. Uh, Facebook Messenger, I'm sure most of you know what that is. Uh, Reddit. Um, so Reddit essentially is a massive collection of forums where, uh, you know, I use Reddit. It's great. Uh, you can share news, read news, all sorts of stuff. Uh, there's a, like, tons of different, they call them subreddits, uh, each covering different topics. Um, and I mentioned Reddit because in this one, there's a, I guess, a subreddit called Roast Me, uh, which encourages youth to post pictures of themselves for the purpose of allowing other users to provide the harshest comments they can. Uh, these threads have no limits and all comments are considered fair game. Many of the comments, of course, are vulgar and disrespectful. Uh, and note that most individuals freely post pictures of themselves and are fully on board. Uh, so uh, Instagram, again, very well known. Um, you can send private messages. Uh, so what I did is I asked a few friends who have teenage children uh, to find about apps that teens are using and then they might know what their parents to know about. Snapchat uh, is fairly common. Um, basically, the yeah the pictures show or the videos show for a limited time and they disappear. Uh, most teens might be using the app to share goofy or embarrassing photos without the risk of them going public. However, there are lots of opportunities to use it in other ways. Uh, TikTok uh, is a video sharing social networking service. Uh, it can be used to make a very a variety of short uh, videos. 
Um, Discord is one that I'd never heard of. Um, it's an instant messaging digital distribution platform designed for creating communities. Uh, it's used to communicate with voice or video calls, texts, or private chats. Um, similar app would be like WhatsApp or Kick or Signal. Uh, Omegle or Omegle, I don't know how you say that. Um, this is a free online chat website that allows us, allows users to socialize without the need to register. So you're randomly paired up on a one-on-one -on -one chat with someone using anonymous names. Um, it's a webcam chat. Uh, and it, so in the chat itself, uh, you can label it you and stranger, or there's actually a spy mode, which labels the chat stranger one and stranger two. Uh, yeah, so those are just a few apps. Again, there's several more, it's new ones every day. So I'm sure there's more that your kids are using, uh, but just that's a start. So uh, this slide doesn't talk about what to do if you find child explicit material online. Uh, so you report the user and content to the service, such as you know to YouTube or whatever it is. Uh, report the non-Canadian website URL to cybertip.ca. Let's see here if that comes up. There we go. Um, so cybertip.ca, that's where the uh, I believe it was a naked mole rat video who who made that. Um, they received complaints from Canadians regarding websites potentially hosting child porn images. Uh, oh, Project Arachnid. Uh, so the Canadian Centre for Child Protection developed a new tool to combat the growing amount of child sexual abuse material on the internet. So this Project Arachnid, it's an automated, they call it an automated crawler which helps reduce the online availability of child sexual abuse material and break the cycle of abuse. So it detects images and videos based on confirmed digital fingerprints of illegal content. Uh, so it's an innovative tool that uh, detects content at a speed exponentially faster than current methods. So over a six week period, uh, Project Arachnid processed over 230 million web pages. Uh, they detected over 5.1 million unique web pages posting uh, child sexual abuse material and detected over 40,000 unique images of child sexual abuse. So when child sexual abuse material is identified, a notice is sent to the host uh, hosting provider to request its immediate removal. So, um, you know, what to do if there's a photo or a video of me online. Uh, talk to somebody anonymously, kids help phone numbers listed there. Uh, tell someone you trust, parent, teacher, police officer, counselor, anybody you trust. Uh, report the incident to the website or social media platform. Uh, need help, uh, needhelpnow.ca, uh, visit there to learn how to take down the photo from social media accounts and report it, the photo to cybertip.ca. Uh, there's just a note here that for, when you report it to cybertip.ca, uh, report your information under the category non-consensual distribution of an intimate image. Uh, include your contact information as this will make it easier for Cybertip to help you. And uh, if you're being threatened, intimidated, or blackmailed in any way, uh, we highly encourage you to report it to cybertip.ca or your local police. Uh, so Interpol ICSE stands for the International Child Sexual Exploitation. Uh, they hold a database. Uh, in this database, there's 54 countries that are connected. Uh, and so in 2018, there were 15 children identified every day uh, through this. So kind of tough to see this top right graph uh, shows the total victims identified by nationality. Uh, for both these graphs, the last stat was available uh, February 1st, 2019. So on the top here for victims, uh, Canada ranked third on the list with 1,191. Uh, UK was second with 2,261 uh, and the most was the US at uh, 800, sorry, 8,830. So the bottom right graph here uh, shows now total offenders by nationality. Uh, so Canada ranked fourth on the list with 502, and the most was the U.S. here at 4,558. So uh, just about done here, just leave you with a few resources. 
Uh, so these here are a few websites that you can look into for more information. Uh, there's many more, but it's the start. Uh, there's the Saffron Center in Sherwood Park and SACE in Edmonton. SACE stands for the Sexual Assault Center of Edmonton. Uh, both are excellent local resources. So I'll give you a couple seconds here to look at um, look at these. Like I said, there's there's so much information out there. Um, that's yeah. This is just a start. Uh, so here's some phone numbers and uh, numbers that you can text as well. Um, again, there's there's many more, but this is this is just a start. So uh, that's going to bring us to our end here. Hopefully, you've learned a thing or two. Uh, if you care to follow the RCP on social media, these are their handles here facebook twitter youtube and instagram uh, if you have any further questions please consider doing some research of your own i've given you a bunch of resources there uh, but of course and if in any doubts contact your local police uh, and if in any situation in any emergency always remember to call 911 well uh, thanks for listening and take care